Good morning and welcome again to the worship here at uh, St Paul's with St James. We come to worship the Lord together, to listen to what he has to say to us, to talk to him, that we may be one with him, he may be one with us, and in that process to go forward, especially in difficult times, especially in times that we just don't understand. We can't grasp hold of us. Many of us here, no, three of us here, have had our jabs already. Uh, we're on all four. Um, and uh, Mr. Policeman, that's all there is actually, <laughs> except the projector. <laughs> anyway, um, lovely to uh, be here again to worship the Lord and pray that we'll be together in church uh, before long. Come, let us praise the Lord. Let us shout with joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with praise and thanksgiving, and praise him with music and song. Loving God, we come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude, and to listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today we're looking at the listening church. Um, Paul was one of the people who had really forgotten to listen to really what God was saying. We're going to hear the story and the catastrophe that followed. Uh, and it's all to do with, uh, with not listening. Um, I looked at some t-shirts recently, um, here's one, take some thinking about it, you better concentrate on this. My wife just stopped me and said, you weren't even listening, were you? What an odd way to start a conversation. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, well, sort of got that. <laughs> You've got to be quick with these. Here's, here's one, it's easier. My wife's secrets are safe with me. I've, I've stopped listening. <laughs> That's not me, you understand. I always <laughs> listen to my wife. Uh, and, and what about the women? Here's uh, one. I am Wonder Woman. I wonder where I left my keys. I wonder where I put my purse. I wonder where my money went. What happens when we uh, when we forget to listen. That's what we're going to be looking at, really. Um, some of the disasters that can happen just because somebody forgot to listen. We now go on with our service and um, we come to the peace. Just um, continue sitting there at home. I think we're going to stand, aren't we, the five of us? Oh, this the organist, Kathleen, as well, six. We're a happy bunch this morning. Um, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. And we will wave to each other. And you can, you can hug at home. <laughs> You're more fortunate than us. So having offered one another the sign of peace, let us come to the times when we've actually forgot to listen to God. When we've just been so preoccupied, maybe, even when we're in a service. And, and, and surely that's uh, the most telling time to forget to listen to God, isn't it? The Gospel calls us to turn away from things that uh, distract us, from sin, to be faithful to Christ as we offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith. We renew our confidence and our trust in his mercy. And together we say, 
most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and also raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, I promised you um, a story for the time Paul, or rather Saul, as he was known at that particular time, um, forgot to listen to God, listening to a lot of other things, but certainly God really wasn't one of them. This is the disaster that happened. In our first reading. The reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9 and verse 1. Saul was breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul said. I am Jesus. Whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men travelling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in the vision, Ananias? Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In the vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hand on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptised, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. 
Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus and once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who caused havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Almighty God, you cause the light of the gospel to shine throughout the world through the preaching of your son or your servant, St. Paul. And you did this eventually. But at the time we meet him in this lesson, Lord, he's not listening to you. He's listening to other voices. Help us, Lord, as we look at this story and grant that we who celebrate this wonderful conversion may follow him because he did start to listen to you. You worked in his life miraculously and you brought him to his senses so that we might know Jesus Christ the Son of our Lord, the one who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Listening is the uh, perhaps one of the most difficult things. They taught us at college that um, you'll have many things to do but the one thing that is important are the two ears if you've got one mouth and two ears you have to listen twice as much as you spout too many of us a long time to learn that lesson but <laughs> some of us did I'm not saying who <laughs> um, It's very difficult, isn't it, to listen, and especially if people are rabbiting on and they're really not listening to you when you start to talk. That really, really does get us. Uh, and eventually we stop listening to them. I think Paul stopped listening to God um, almost uh, by the time he was in his 20s. He'd reached a stage where he was convinced that um, Judaism had already done all the thinking over 2,000 years and they had God down to a T. He'd been with them for 2,000 years, for heaven's sake, for their own sake. He'd shown them who he was. They didn't particularly need to listen all that carefully anymore, it was a matter of road. It was a matter of getting to the synagogue or the temple and going through the movements. And when that happens, God help us. But when that happens, you can end up like Paul, who was in line to become 
uh, one of the world's greatest criminals. Already he'd held the coats of uh, one Christian martyr, Stephen. He'd goaded the people on to kill him, to stone him to death. He'd gone now to the officials um, and they'd, he pleaded with them to send him now on to Damascus where these people of the way, that's what they called these uh, Christians in those days, they actually became known as Christians in Antioch, but it was more of a, a bit of a jeer. Oh, look at those Christians, those little Christs. Actually, the Christians rather like that. They thought, yeah, that sums us up to a T. We should be all the time trying to be little Christ. And that's why the name stuck. Up until that point, they'd called themselves the way. Jesus had said uh, to John, uh, chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It caught on. They began to say, we are of the way, the truth, the light. But now, Paul was out to stop these once and for all. He'd had enough. Uh, he'd seen what happened at Pentecost. He'd seen 3,000 Jewish people converted. They'd lost 3,000 people from the temple and worship. The, the Sunday after Pentecost, it was pretty thin. They'd gone down to Solomon's portico to hear more about this incredible saviour. That's what kept happening. The Jews were enraged, angry, that um, their religion should be treated like this. Um, and Paul was chief among them. He wanted really uh, to wipe out the way. That was the only thing he could consider. Uh, he'd not talked to God about it. We know that because God had made the way. What's the way? This is the great problem, isn't it? When we stop talking to God, when we think we know the way. Interesting exercise, this, because uh, um, I was given two readings. Uh, we could have the one or the other. This, we had the long one, but I chose the short one because I wanted to preach about what comes after death. And, um, and I was, I was I'm, I'm hooked on that subject at the moment. I think I was preaching for myself, really. <laughs> uh, I will I promise to give you what they, the, one of these days, but it just seemed not right. Uh, and so I began to do a standard sermon on the conversion of St. Paul. And uh, I, before I turned in at one o'clock um, this morning, I thought I'll just have a read through. And it was terrible. Um, and so by two o'clock I'd made the decision that um, a new sermon was needed still on the same subject but in a different way I just felt the Lord was saying I need people to listen to me and this was the exact example of what happens when people don't listen to me so hence this sermon I finished it at six o'clock this morning so I got a good hour's sleep in before breakfast <laughs> <laughs> And I'm uh, looking forward to this afternoon, <laughs> for my afternoon nap, I can tell you that. <laughs> but it's right, it's important, isn't it, that a preacher should go and, and get the okay from God. And if he's, if he's not preaching what the Lord wants, then he shouldn't be preaching. Um, it does seem a strange thing, doesn't it? Uh, one sinner talking to a group of sinners. I mean, it's doomed to failure for a start, isn't it, that? 
except in the mix is God. And the idea is that the congregation have gone and said, Lord, this is coming up. Help me to see what you're saying to me as I, as I have the word read to me, as I have this preached to me. Help me, Lord, to know what you're telling me. And hopefully the, the minister, the preacher has done the same. He's gone and he said, Holy Spirit of God, work in me that I may know the message that you want me to give. Eventually he got through to me this weekend and, and this is why you've got this. There's one thing I learned at college and it was this, that by the end of the sermon, every one of you should no longer be listening. Because if, if it's worked right, you will have got that which God wants you to have by the time the sermon comes to the end. By the time I come to the end, I'm just dealing with the odd one that's still wondering what God's saying. It's good, isn't it, that? Talk yourself out of a job. <laughs> but that's the way it's supposed to work. It's supposed to work. Preaching and Christianity only makes sense if you put God right in the heart of it. And that's the beauty of what preaching is all about. Unfortunately, that's what the beauty of the church is all about as well. But unfortunately, God gets um, set to one side. I've lost count of the number of times I've uh, ridden between Blackburn and Accrington only to get to one or the other and really re haven't remembered to concentrate on the driving. And it's on those times, you know, like doing the Lord's Prayer. You get to the end of the Lord's Prayer and you've forgotten to mean the words, you've forgotten to think of the words or the creed. You've left God out. I've left God out. Um, and uh, it's in those times when disaster can happen. We see this in Paul's actions. The Jews have stopped talking to God uh, except for a series of set words in their services. Uh, the rest were set in concrete or stone in uh, the Ten Commandments. Um, and on that, and his own reaction, he determined that he'd wipe out every way a member of the followers, uh, 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 every follower of the way. Christians and churches are doomed to follow this pattern when they stop listening to the Spirit's directions and it's the easiest thing in the world. Christianity was only saved when Paul was forced to listen to God. And it was only because a man called Ananias was paying attention at this time and listened to the father. The father had this man Ananias, one of his faithful followers, and he could go and say, look, You've got somebody coming. I want you to make him welcome. You won't want to. You may feel that he may kill the whole of your family. I want you to make him welcome. This is me talking to you. This is God. And on that basis, Ananias, bless his faith. <laughs> Would I have run a million miles? Would, would I have said, on your bike, God, you know, God asking me uh, to step into um, such danger, and my family as well, and Ananias was in the same situation. But now he listened to God, and he went on and talked and had a conversation with God, got his instructions, and 
It was because Paul had been told that there was this man that suddenly he was prepared to listen to God. That and the fact that he'd been thrown from his horse. That and the fact that he'd been blind for three days. That and terrible, terrible suspicion that was dawning on him. And actually, maybe he'd got this all wrong. I mean, there was a, a hint of that when the light came down shattered everything, he fell from the horse and he cried out quite peculiarly. What was it he said? Is that you, Lord? I mean, commentators are puzzled over that, but, you know, did he, did, had, did he know Jesus? Had he seen him before? Or, more likely, was it the fact that um, He'd come up against a power that he didn't understand, that was more than him, and Lord seemed to be the only word. Who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus, whom you're persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you'll be told what you must do. And suddenly Paul began to listen to Christ and that's all Christ needed at this particular point to launch the second phase of his Christian church. The first was at Pentecost, that was what had enraged Paul so much, losing all these members from his temple. That was what, that, that was why the Jews pursued these Christians for so long trying to get the Romans to kill every one of them because they were losing them from the pews in their synagogues and in the temple. It just beggars belief, doesn't it, really? That we call ourselves godly men and yet we would do this. Such atrocities in the name of this God that we follow. Do you know what happened to Paul after all this had settled down? Well, it says that he went into um, the city, to Damascus, and uh, he preached. And uh, he preached so effectively. And let's face it, this was a Jew of the Jews. This was a Jew who knew the whole story from the Garden of Eden right through up until that last prophet came. And suddenly, if Jesus was the Son of God, then such and such a passage was right. Oh, and there's that passage, as well. oh, and that one. Oh, and suddenly the whole of the Old Testament exploded in light for him. He actually didn't need teaching anything. He already had it. And it was just one revelation after another. That was part of the... The, the, the scales coming away from his eyes. He saw because he was prepared to listen and to take note. What are we missing in our church life? Because we don't pay attention closely enough to the Lord. And, and if you feel I'm, I'm getting a bit heated about this, I'm, I'm only getting annoyed with myself <laughs> because I do it as much as anybody else you know I should listen to God far more I've run parishes as my own forgetting that they belong to God it was more convenient to do that <laughs> it was a quick way to do it but I think I came across a few errors in my leadership because of it Paul began to preach conversion so effectively did he do it, so effectively that they began, everybody in Damascus, to see that Jesus Christ actually was the Son of God. And 
of course they were after him again. And his friends, by this time, they'd be moved from being nervous associates to friends. Uh, they hid him and eventually they sent him back uh, to Tarsus where he grew up, where he was trained. And he remained there for, for quite a few months, three years I think it was, maybe wrong on that. But he spent that time just going after revelation upon revelation, going right through the Old Testament. He, he already had his tutor's book all set out there. When he came back to Damascus and began preaching some time later, he was on fire. And it took him three times around what was to become Europe. He wore probably hundreds of sandals down to the bare skin and bone. <laughs> that was himself. Uh, he must have gone through a lot of donkeys just going here and there. Shipwreck couldn't stop him. Shipwreck five times. He received the lashes uh, numerous times. Uh, and the, the Roman whip also. But nothing would stop him. Because now he was listening to God. Are we a listening church? I'm sorry I've taken so long to get to that. <laughs> but this is the question I think God wants us to dwell on. Do I listen to him enough? Does the church itself get away and listen to God? I know of one church and they've spent the whole of this, uh, this last week in prayer. Um, they've done it on Zoom, a bit, a bit odd, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but they've um, united together, coming together in, in a, uh, an online uh, report session, as it were. And they've just been simply listening to God and seeing what he wants them to do in this coming year. Are we doing that with our lives? Are we doing that with our church? And I think with that, I've, I've said what the Lord wanted me to say. And I commit it into your hands. The Christian church is run by God's Holy Spirit. And that means listening to the Holy Spirit, instructing the leaders who then guide the flock. And the flock are the people who also go to Christ for his word and for guidance. To be a listening church. So thank you, Lord, for telling us what uh, we should be about, reminding us. I'm sure that some here listen to you far more than I have done and, and they listen far more effectively. But bless us all with that ability that we may hear you and that your Holy Spirit may come and step right in and begin to guide us as to what to do, how to do it, when to do it. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. 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 I think now we come to prayer. Let us pray. We don't. We come to the creed. We can't leave that out, can we? we are saying, I don't believe in anything. <laughs> they did that at one church. So, uh, let's stand. Uh, do as you wish at home. But join with us in the creed. We declare our belief in the words of the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, 
died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray. Thank you, Joe. On this, the last day of the annual week of prayer for Christian unity, as we celebrate the conversion of our patron soul, Paul, let us pray for the needs of the world, our country, the church, and ourselves. Almighty God, may we, as individuals and as a fellowship, play our part in working towards unity in our diversity at every opportunity. Hear our prayer for those who will be enemies to you and to your church. Bring them, as you brought St Paul, to a deep love of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. We pray for church leaders everywhere to work continuously to promote worldwide Christian togetherness. Lord, you long for us to be one body and one spirit. So we ask you to show us how to make friendly relationships with people of other nations and other faiths that will help to end indifference and hatred and foster healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray that all world leaders may continuously seek an end to the sufferings caused by war and violence, injustice and inequality, disease and prejudice, poverty and homelessness, so that the whole world may know, <clears throat> may know your peace and healing. We pray especially for strength, determination and success for Joe Biden as he takes office as the President of the United States of America. Here in our own country, loving Lord, and during another lockdown, we ask that you will be alongside family members and friends whom we are not able to be with in person. Comfort any who feel lost, lonely or neglected in their isolation, and those devastated by bereavement, remembering especially the family, friends and colleagues of the late Sarah Wack. We ask that you would bring rest where there is weariness, fresh encouragement where there is hopelessness, and hope where there is despair. We pray for your blessing and support for our friend and former parishioner, the Reverend Munawar Din, inducted as Vicar of St Paul's Luke's Briarfield and St Cuthbert's Burnley on Wednesday evening, January the 20th. Help us all to remember that we should try to overcome any conflicts, unnecessary divisions or self-seeking, that joined by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may work for your kingdom here on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you understand the pain of loss, the heartache of bereavement, and our fears at times of confusion and doubt. When you walked on this earth, you spread your healing power. And so we know that we can entrust to your loving care all affected by coronavirus, wherever they may be in the world. We pray that you will guide and protect all healthcare workers who, on the front line in the fight against COVID-19, contribute so much to our well-being. May they know and feel our love and appreciation for all they are willing to do. We ask that your spirit will inspire 
those continual research in new medicines and treatments. Please keep us and all your people strong in faith, hope and love, with the courage and perseverance always to be good neighbours, following Jesus with the willingness of the, of the apostles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our yeah. prayer. Father God, we thank you for hearing our prayers and for the challenge as well as the joyful assurance of our faith. Help us to give our worries to you and above all to trust in your unfailing love. For you have promised us, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Give us then the certainty to know that whatever our tomorrows may bring, you are there with us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and our praises into one, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So Lord, send us away listening, attentive, always wanting to know what you think, what your guidance is, what your way will be for our lives, for the way of your church. And as this happens, may we know the blessing of God Almighty, as did Paul. The Father, the Father's blessing, the Son's blessing, and especially the Holy Spirit's powerful blessing. May they be among us as they were with Paul and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. So now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And we sing together, may God's blessing surround you each day. Well, we can't sing it, but you can at home. May God's blessing surround us today, Lord. Let's us trust you and walk in your way. May his presence, presence within guard and keep us from sin. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. Amen. Thank you.